Alrighty, y'all. Welcome back to another video. We're looking at the insane world of sidecar racing now. Uh, MotoGP, which I have to learn about, but I just know of, and uh, any motorcycle racing, really. And then, of course, Isle of Man TT isn't dangerous enough. How crazy and weird and bizarre is sticking the sidecar on there and going as fast as possible? It seems crazy. It, it doesn't even seem like it's real. It's so bizarre for me to hear. So we're going to learn about it. And this is from an excellent channel called Driver61. It'll be linked in the description down below. I highly encourage you to check that channel out. And this is a uh, suggestion from Discord from uh, Zitziv or Zitziv, Zitziv, something like that. Thank you very much for that. And uh, before we start, let me just say uh, I did not get a chance. I've been super busy, of course, with kids and wife and all these different things to hear from you guys and uh, just actually seeing it on my phone that five. I believe five people lost their life at uh, Isle of Man this year for 2022. Uh, that is obviously tragic, terrible, and I feel for the families and everyone affected by that, uh, that is just not good. Not good at all. Uh, I know that comes with the territory, and I know that drivers, I always say drivers, I'm so used to cars. I know that riders um, and, and you know participants in this event know the risks. I know that they, they basically, a lot of them say that comes with the territory, but it's still extremely tragic. And, uh, God, I, you know, you hope that never happens at all. So just wanted to say, pay, you know, pay my respects and uh, mention that in case you weren't aware. Well, anyway, moving on, we're going to learn about the insane world of sidecar racing. Let's jump right into it. Here we go. This is sidecar racing and it's absolutely crazy. My they are God. three wheeled bikes that can hit one. Hold on. There. Uh, I made myself a little smaller. Let's restart that. This is Sorry. sidecar racing, and it's absolutely crazy. They are three-wheeled bikes that can hit 160 oh my God. miles an hour on the residential streets of the Isle of Man. But what's oh, incredible oh, oh. is that it's it insane. takes two people to, to drive, drive this thing. thing. One on the controls and one manipulating the balance of the bike. What and controlling the this thing at that sort of speed with walls, curbs, and blind crests must be terrifying but oh not as God. much as being the passenger whilst doing that so okay i wasn't aware when i thought of sidecar racing that they looked quite like that and i certainly wasn't aware that, they, that they're like hanging out of the vehicle like what what the hell this is crazy today let me explain the engineering and the insane what? driving skill behind sidecar how can racing. these go that fast I think that'd be, I would think that'd this be clunky. This is a Formula 2 sidecar, around 130 horsepower, 350 Look at that! Including the riders, and a top speed of well over 160 miles per hour. Wow. They run standard 600cc, four-stroke bike engines, and racing slicks. The speed oh they travel at is honestly astonishing. Now, sidecar racing is huge with many Jeez. different classes and events, from circuits like Brands Hatch and Alton Park to the scariest of them all, the Isle of Man Snaefell Mountain Course. The Isle of Man <laughs> statistically the most dangerous races in the world, yes. and by quite some margin. Yeah, the number not of even horrific close crashes for any, is endless. Else. But despite this, hundreds of races across bikes, superbikes, and sidecars rock up every year to take it on. And whilst I do moan about organizers making tracks too sterile at the moment with massive runoffs, the risks at the TT are far higher than I personally would take. One misjudgment or one yeah. mechanical failure could send you off a hill oh. or into oh. a brick wall. The Ooh. track weaves through tight island roads. Look at it lifting that a wheel. With tight sections <laughs> and more open weaving sections where riders this are is flat insane. out for minutes at a time. These sidecars manage an average of 120 miles per hour around these 200 turns. And to put this into perspective, the top class of superbikes, which are far, far lighter, manage this with a 130 miles per hour average. The T Oh my God, so they're like, they're almost on the immediate trail of just a regular superbike with no sidecar. That's insane is a time trial event that is held over a fortnight 
one week of practice and you're going to need every minute of that and a week of races. They set the riders off 10 seconds apart. So whilst you are racing the clock, if you're quick, you have to put in some ballsy overtakes too. If you want to see Jeez. loads of quality footage on this, check out the three wheeling channel linked below. And thank you to them for supplying a lot of the footage for this video. And this track would be terrifying in a car with four wheels and a roll cage, one driver. Hey, uh, look for that on my channel. I have two videos on this time attack right here. It was excellent. Check it out. And the ability to take left and right handed corners at the same sort of speed. But sidecars have none of these things. But before we get into it, some lingo. The sidecar itself is called an outfit. The person on the right okay. is called the driver and the madman who's hanging off the side is called a passenger. Anyway, from an engineering perspective, what makes these sidecars unusual is that they aren't symmetrical. Right. They have two wheels in line and then one on the side. So when I'm driving on track, whether- Which to me, I feel like a lot of people are like that. I feel like I want things symmetrical. That's just like so not symmetrical, right? It's weird. It's like a broken design it looks like. Uh, but clearly it must work. It, it doesn't look like it should work. It looks like, like I said earlier, it looks too clunky. So uh, this is bizarre. In Catrims or Formula One cars, you get a feel for the car's cornering ability and then apply this to both left-handers and right-handers. However, these sidecars actually take right-handers far quicker than left-handers. And this is down to, in right-handers, the outfit yeah. leaning on that sidecar wheel, where in left-handers, the whole thing yeah. wants to tip over. That Years ago, sense. these outfits used to look more like a bike and sidecar. Right. However, now they are bespoke. That's what I'm picturing, I guess. I must have seen pictures sometime, at some point in my life of old, like literally a bike with, it, it looks separate, right? Whereas this new, these newer, uh, the footage clips we've seen, the newer ones, it does. It's like almost streamlined. It looks weird, but it looks way more uniform and it looks like a clean design. With advanced aero and much improved performance. Mm. They are powered by a single rear wheel, the one behind the driver, and are steered by the front wheel through some very small handlebars. They can also outbreak superbikes down to the huge slick tires oh. and the enormous car brakes that stop all three wow, wheels. Wow, they look actually here, use they car use like flat racing tires brakes. rather than the rounded bike tires. So yeah. they have a much yeah. larger oh, contact. I didn't notice that at first. Yeah. That's actually between the brakes and the tires. Look at that huge contact patch to uh, compared to yeah, the tires you would see on a super bike. That makes perfect sense. These these are way bigger tires. Wow. That's an advantage. Packed. Big time. So more grip in the corners and especially wow. on the brakes. How now fascinating. Now to the question I'm sure you're all wondering. What about the dude on the back? Yeah. Well, they are called passengers or more casually, monkeys. And that kind of makes sense. These guys have to be incredibly I, fit just to hold on yeah. at these speeds and g-forces. That is like a fitness overload. He has to be super fit. This is super hard on your core, on basically all your muscles, everything. And uh, obviously, I don't believe he's like belted in or something, right? I mean, he is just hanging for the ride and has to be literally hanging on for dear life, as well as strategizing where he needs to move his weight to uh, help aid the driver and uh, the vehicle stay on track as fast as possible and quite frankly as safe as possible their role it's is crazy. to maintain the balance of the outfit without them the sidecar just wouldn't work true it would be minutes a lap slower around the tt course so they cling on staying out of the airflow on the straights and hang off either yeah. side around the corners essentially making up the uneven handling of the sidecar. Around right-handers, wow. they climb over the top oh my of the God. driver to keep the weight on the inside tires. Then what the heck? You saw that movement? precariously over the side of the bike. And this is the oh. bit that looks the most sketchy. They very often skid their backs along the surface of the track. And what the hell, man? This is so sketchy. Okay, that is crazy. God, I don't know now who's crazier. I don't know. <laughs> It used to be who's crazier, Formula One drivers, high-speed rally drivers, or Isle of Man TT riders. I think popular opinion, as well as my opinion after thinking about it, was Isle of Man TT riders take the cake uh, for having the most courage, the most bravery, and uh, quite frankly, the most superhuman skill just to finish, let alone win. <laughs> but now I don't know. 
who's crazier? Regular Superbike Isla Man TT riders or the sidecar racing passengers? Because this is absolutely crazy. I almost want to say these guys are even crazier because I would be scared to death riding a super bike around the Isle of Man TT, like trying to break a record or something. I'd be scared to death. But at least I'm like on a conventional motorcycle that, you know, you are in control of and you ride essentially normal. Just you try and ride really fast. This is like, this is not normal. This is weird. <laughs> this is hella dangerous. I can even get knocked off God. if the driver gets it wrong. Along oh, the man. straights, they duck. And you gotta trust the driver. Out of the airflow, then pop up in the braking zones to add as much drag as possible. Then as the driver turns into the corner, they have to quickly but carefully get in position so that the bike sticks. So, so uh, let me get this straight. <laughs> that passenger is uh, a real old fashioned version of active aero. Am I right? <laughs> in a car, you trail brake into the corner, meaning you gently release the brake pressure as you enter. This is all to transfer the weight of the car as gently as possible. On a sidecar, the driver is still doing this, but with the added component of another person moving around too. And it must be so tough to coordinate these two things yeah. perfectly. How Some do they even get this even right? count or feel the bumps. Also, they don't need to pop their head up to see when the next corner is coming, which around a 38 mile lap is mighty impressive. As you can imagine, it takes enormous trust from both parties. Yeah. The driver has to trust that the passenger will be in place to give him grip when he needs it. Then yeah, these two gotta be on the same freaking page. I mean, their uh, their bodies depend on it, right? And the passenger Jeez. has to trust the driver that he's got his estimations right. The passengers hold on to a few specific handles. The main one is in the center of the bike. The riders hold this through the highest G sections, the braking zones, where they have to be up pretty high on the bike whilst the driver is on the anchors. Then there are several smaller holes around oh the sidecar for the cornering sections, as well as a specially shaped platform with places for the passenger to jam their foot in for grip. It really is oh like rock God. climbing at 150 miles per hour. Now, what I find oh. mad is also what the driver has to do. It's not like a car where the grip is more predictable and the balance of the car is pretty steady. The most a car changes is when the tires wear or the fuel burns off both of which happen slowly and predictably. Yeah. But on these bikes, if the passenger isn't in the right place at exactly the right time, the bike won't have the grips you expect it to. Oh, there really no. are two people steering these sidecars. But the thing I can't get over is the enormous risk that every driver takes on this track. Many of the riders have rituals where they hug their families every time they get on the bike at this track even Yikes. in practice. There are oh. too many crashes, many of which are tragic. Oh so God. you can imagine the nerves when sat at that oh. start line. But as we all know, all motorsport can be dangerous. Right. And we go into it knowing the risks. The skill, composure, and dedication from these riders demands huge respect. One thing I had to find out was how do you build up to doing this? How do you first learn yeah. the ropes in hanging off the side of a sidecar at silly speeds? Yeah. Well, just like what karting is to single seaters, miniature sidecars what? is to sidecars. These are awesome. They are called mini F1 sidecars. What? And they race on kart circuits. The racing is brilliant with some oh my awesome God. battles and some massive sends. You can really <laughs> see how the passengers move the weight around, getting on the inside of each corner, hanging way off the side of the outfit. Oh you my God, that it. is hilarious that they have miniature sidecar racing. I'm gonna have to check that out another time. That is insane. Uh, massive, massive respect to anyone that has the, the courage, the skills, and uh, the wherewithal to do this sport. This is absolutely outrageous. And uh, I mean that as a compliment. <laughs> this is another motorsport. As someone who is a diehard car guy, uh, I just love anything with the wheels and engine. And uh, racing, uh, just even just driving in general is just so therapeutic and fun. And uh, usually when it comes to a vehicle, I'm not too scared. I, I'm pretty, pretty bold and pretty brave. But this is just another motorsport uh, of the few that I just couldn't even imagine trying at all. I mean, this is just outrageous. Really, really great suggestions, as always. 
this was an excellent video, uh, as it always is from this channel. Really, just outrageous. That's the one word I could think of. Like, I don't think there is a strong enough word. This is absolutely crazy. Tell me if you uh, think this is crazier than the traditional just uh, motorbikes uh, that we're, that I'm, you know, what I learned about first and what I'm used to seeing at Isle of Man. And uh, if you think this is crazier, it, maybe you think the traditional is crazier. But either way, this is just wild. You got to tell me what you think of this and uh, tell me if you got to see this year's Isle of Man. I want to catch up on some highlight videos and stuff very, very soon. Like I said, I'm very sorry to hear that uh, there were multiple, multiple passings. Uh, that is absolutely horrible. That being said, guys, I know you got some enjoyment out of that. If you did, if you learned something new, if this made you smile, please throw a thumbs up, a like on this video, help it out. I do appreciate it. And of course, you can subscribe, join our amazing community we have on this channel, and uh, never miss another fun video like this again. Check the description out for this original video and other ways you can interact with my channel. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook at IW Rocker. The Discord is in the description as well. My name is Ian. You're watching IW Rocker. Until next time, guys, be safe out there. I'll catch you later.